All right, welcome back to Ireland Contracting, nightly sports coverage to Walsh, along with Chris Muller for tonight's show. Hey, I know you're upset about this, Chris. Uh, the Pitt soccer team, season comes to an end, a one nothing loss to Indiana tonight. Uh, disappointing. They, they, I, I watched most of that game. They were, you know, they were playing pretty well. Um, you thought that this was a chance for them to win a national title. It would be good. Not too many people follow the Pitt soccer team. It's an Olympic sport, but you, you tend to get excited about when Olympic sports do well on a national level. I was into the Pitt women's volleyball team's deep run uh, in their tournament, so I was into the soccer run, maybe not as much, because I do actually like watching volleyball a little more than soccer, but I had a neighbor over while I was watering the lawn outside, and he had the game on his phone. He was watching Pitt soccer, and you know whose name came up? Rich Walsh. Whoa. That's right. Did he oh, think yeah. I, did he think uh, I played soccer for Pitt? No, but he knew Rich Walsh, varsity athlete at Pitt. He was well aware of the tra of the track legend that oh, was, was Rich Walsh. Who is this oh, guy? Yes. Who is well, your neighbor? <laughs> oh, I'm going to have to. I mean, my lips are sealed on that one, Rich. But needless to say, your reputation precedes you for your athletic prowess. Oh, well, thank you, Chris. I, I, I take that as a compliment, I hope. Um, all right. Let's go out to the phone lines, Chris. Wait, before we go out to the phone lines, I want to get your prediction for the, um, uh, the Penguin series. I like the Pens in six. I think it's going to be a lot tougher than what people think. Why, do you, why does everybody pick their, their team in six? What's, what's the rationale? Because I think if I had to guess what a, a typically common prediction is, if you don't think that the other team is necessarily on the Penguins level, it's always six games, right? Yeah. Is it just because you think, like, the Islanders will get one here or there? Well, I think, I look, look the Islanders are good at home. The Penguins are good at home. Uh, I think the Islanders are good enough to stretch this to six games. Do you think that the Penguins uh, – I didn't think Montreal could beat the Penguins in five games last year. I think it's going to be similar to that 2013 series. Was It was 2013, I think. Um, yeah, when extremely they... tense. That was an extremely tense series. I remember vividly Tyler Kennedy uh, scoring a pivotal goal, I want to say on a penalty shot or a breakaway. I can't remember which one. And I want to also say an elimination game there. And it felt like uh, an enormous weight was lifted. I think it could be a tough series, and, and make no mistake, the Islanders are good enough with their system and their discipline to beat the Penguins, not to stretch the series to six or to seven. They're good enough to win. That said, I think the Penguins are going to win in five games. Semyon Varlamov uh, has an 897 save percentage against the Penguins this season. That's basically the worst of any team in the East that he's had, you know, that he played this year, obviously, in division. And Sorokin, their uh, young goaltender, their rookie, he doesn't really have much more success either. Uh, he had a shutout of the Penguins, but then they, cha they had four goals on nine shots against them. The goaltending is a key in that kind of system. You know, if they're going to play disciplined hockey and try to win 2-1-3-2, the Islanders, I mean, they better have their goalie hold up, and I don't think that's going to happen in well, this series. Well, goaltending's huge in this series, and let me just throw this out there. I just hate to be the, uh, the negative Nancy here, uh, but, you know, you look at last year, everyone thought the Penguins were going to win. Every time the Penguins are supposed to win. Let's go back to uh, 2013 uh, conference finals when the Penguins were the big favorites. They dominated Boston all through the regular season, and then they get swept um, because of the goalie, namely. But sometimes I feel like the Penguins come into these series way too confident. They had a week to sit on this right now, and that's, that scares me a little bit, even though they've been so good at home. Uh, I think... Man, if they come in too confident because they've been playing pretty well and they've been almost invincible at home, if Mike Sullivan was actually worried about that, you know what he could do? Just put on the old tape of the 2019 Islanders series where they got absolutely slapped around and completely humiliated and Crosby had one point in a four-game sweep. They should know, based on the opponent, the guy that's still coaching that opponent, that there should be no such thing as overconfidence because the Islanders absolutely – embarrassed them the last time they rolled in on their high horse and thought they were going to run over this little system hockey team. If Anders Lee was playing for the Islanders in this series and wasn't done for the season, I think it would be a seven-gamer. Yeah. And I think the Penguins might actually be the team without home ice advantage because that's how much Anders Lee meant to the Isles. But his absence and some shaky goaltending numbers where I think they've broken Varlamov mentally in the past – I think are going to carry the day for the Penguins. Yeah, I here. want to say the Pe the Islanders were ahead of the Pens in the standings at that point in time when he got hurt. Or they're it, it fifteen was, it was and fourteen close. since Anders Lee got out of the lineup. So I mean that that says it all. I mean they're an average hockey team without him right now, and they're one that can't score many goals. All right, let's go out to Al in Bethel Park. How you doing, Al? Hey, Richie. How you doing? Good. Thanks for calling. Good. Hey, listen. I'm going to make this point with evidence, and I want to hear your opinion real quick. So let me get the point out and get the evidence. Okay. 
everybody talks about Babe Ruth being the greatest player and everything like that. Shohei Otani, what he's doing is more greater and more impressive than Babe Ruth. And the reason is he's doing it in a fully integrated league. So everybody before integration should be disqualified. Shohei Otani is more impressive and the greater athlete than Babe Ruth. Thanks, Rich. Unlike Chris and Bob, who hung up on me the other day. <laughs> Thank you for letting me get it in. Hey, Thanks. Al, look, I don't really think that's evidence, but I appreciate you calling now. I love you. Um, but, you know, I'll agree with you on one point that he is a better athlete than Babe Ruth because you could see, the, we'll look at the way Babe Ruth looked and he smoked and drank every single day. But baseball player, nah, I, I don't agree with that at all. David Bednar would make Babe Ruth look <laughs> silly on three pitches, okay? Guys aren't throwing 100 miles an hour in 1920 when Babe Ruth's But don't you think he can adapt to that? Look, he, all I'm saying is he was the greatest back then. I mean, don't you think that, like, he would, you know, he'd be growing up in baseball now. So, I understand I mean, the times these time are different. Travel, these, these time traveler arguments are always tough. What, but, you know, Al thinks I'm some bad guy. I knew exactly what he was going to call about tonight because he felt like I somehow hung up on him on Wednesday night. I, I only have the controls. This. I know, I know. I actually agree with his overall point, though. I do think players that played in baseball pre-integration have to have their stats looked at with – not like a side eye necessarily, but a more critical eye because the fact of the matter is, and it's obvious, they weren't even playing with, uh, against close to the best talent pool. I mean, that, that's just a fact. So Al might be very surprised to hear this in his palatial Bethel Park mansion, but I agree with his overarching point, if not the specificity directed at Babe Ruth necessarily. All right, we're going to go to our Tri-State Office Furniture tweet of the night. And, you know, we were just talking about Adam Frazier and – Michael McHenry, he has bucko fever, too, there, Chris. Adam Frazier can flat-out hit. He had four out of his seven hits for the Bucks tonight. He was four for five. He's batting 315. He's the best player on the team right now. His value is pretty high. It's getting higher. Let's find a deal out there, Chris. we got to get rid of this guy, Adam Frazier. Bring back a bunch of prospects <laughs> for two years from now. All right, got to take a break. Back with more of your phone calls. Some of your tweets coming up next. Stay right there. <laughs> 